This review will contain detailed plot points and spoilers. It is recommended to view this film before listening to this episode. You have been warned. Sit and listen to the masters, the old heads talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please uh, send in a question, come and get some answers, learn a couple lessons from the masters with the special guests. We got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax, cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts and allow me to. To be the very first to welcome you to the Masters of the Nerdiverse. Welcome to MLTM Reviews. This is Masters of the Nerdiverse Reviews, where we take a look at some of cinema's most shiniest supernovas and some that are not so brightly lit. This human folklore of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and Google Play. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And I am also here. My name is Austin, and I will be your also host today, the co-host with the mostest, and I will be directing how this play goes for the day because Mike does not know his American folklore, and I do. I don't know my Southern American folklore <laughs> as much as Austin, apparently. This is, you know, the this Pokemon has just evolved. <laughs> and now he, now he, had, he apparently he's had this gift the I whole time. I am so glad today's video movie. Thank you, by the way, to our lovely contact within Arrow Video who gave us the ability to watch this movie today before it really comes out on release day. Yep. Which is, is December 15th. December 15th. It is called The Mark of the Bell Witch. Haunting audiences December 15th, 2020. Haunting all the audiences with uh, a documentary that really threw me by surprise because I didn't even know, based on the name of it, I really didn't know what to expect. You thought it was a Blair Witch knockoff, didn't you? I legit didn't. I couldn't tell. I thought it was a Bell. I, I thought it was a Blair Witch knockoff very early in the movie. I got this feeling of, you know, that chainsaw, the Chainsaw Massacre feeling. Like, are these actors? <laughs> are these just like people who are really into it because i can't tell if it's either people who are really into it that can act or actors who are really into it so i could not tell and i was and i completely was oblivious that the blair the, the blair witch jesus uh the bell witch is a thing was an actual oh, thing oh the bell witch is indeed a thing in good old appalachia tennessee man because i was watching this and kind of going through, okay, this is maybe, cause at first I thought, like you said, I felt like it was like a mockumentary, maybe <laughs> just cause of the production value, I hate to say. Uh, and some of the people looked like actors. You know what I mean? Like there's this one yeah. guy who had yeah. like the, who had the LA tan, you know what I mean? In Tennessee. Oh God. Yeah. You're, you're, you know what I'm talking it's like about? Mark is like Brad Barker, or Mad math barker math barker PhD uh, of like folk phd folklorist in like the university of tennessee or something like that yeah i saw this guy and i was like that guy's an actor <laughs> so <I was> like, <laughs> this dude is legit you realize like 90 percent of them are not actors i'm not actors These are just folk which really threw me for a loop um about this um documentary about the bell witch who apparently was the influence of the player witch Oh, yeah, the Blair Witch, the Bell Witch. I mean, also, they kind of sound similar, for one thing. Yeah. The Bell Witch takes place in good old Tennessee around the 1800s, where Andrew Jackson was still alive and actually plays a part in this story, actually, which was <laughs> hilarious. Who would you cast as Andrew Jackson <laughs> if this was like a re like a film, dude, like a legit blockbuster mm. movie? It has to be somebody who can play off an old crazy racist really well. Uh, oh, you mean like Mel Gibson? Yes, but I'm thinking more emaciated, more gaunt, and sharp looking. Actually, if you want to get like real racist, we could put Marky Mark in there. Okay, this is a total tangent, just because I have such low knowledge of the Bill Witch. Why is Marky Mark still getting work? Because he's, why he, why he, he's he, attractive. He, 
Why didn't he get me chewed into oblivion, dog? Because he's attractive, and that's really about it. He's in the next Despite Uncharted. him, like, throwing rocks at kids and calling them the N-word. Despite punching an Asian man for being Asian and blinding him. And, and permanently damaging his eyes forever. That, yeah. The things and, we want to forget about. <laughs> yeah, there's just a whole bunch of shit about why Marky Mark was kind of a a bad person. I probably wouldn't want lunch with him, but we digress. Yes. Uh, the Bell Witch... What you what you say takes place in the 1800s mm-hmm. in good old uh, Appalachian Mountains of Tennessee. And if you ever seen or been to the Appalachians, it's almost a whole new world. It's, if it's, you go to, if you go to the Appalachian Mountains in Tennessee, one thing you're going to see is a whole lot of overalls and uh, banjos and also, green. You're going to get a soundtrack kind of like this. Yeah. Makes me remind reminds me of um, working at Disneyland. And we would have like there, and um, they would play like everyone had every other person had a harmonica. <laughs> you would be going to Disneyland, and then they would just start playing "Song of the South." Oh, we don't talk <laughs> about "Song of the South" here on this podcast. <laughs> Uncle Ruckus, <laughs> soon, soon to be changed into the Frog Princess, mind you, because we gotta oh, get that. Okay. We gotta wipe that off existence. Stuff. This is getting way too hard. Okay, so Mark the Bell Witch, produced by Small Monsters. Um, Ink Productions, Small Productions, Monster. Small Monster Pictures, I think is what it is. Anyway, this documentary is amazing because <laughs> one, I love documentaries that cover random bullshit like this. Two, the acting is ham, and I love it. It's so bad. And three, they just they actually portray a lot of the history and the folklore behind this in an accurate manner. Yeah, honestly. yeah, it's it, it's extremely thorough. I would say. It's, yeah, but I can tell that you did not enjoy this just from the tone of your voice already. No, it, it's because you know what it was. It's that, it's that, it's that Blair Witch feeling where it doesn't matter what production value you have. It doesn't matter on how good the acting is. This documentary legit creeped me out because it's steeped in actual history, and there's an underlining truth to that. Even if it's pure lore, the the times where they talk about the hauntings are. The actual designation of the witch itself got under my skin. I can't, I'm not going to lie. It got under my skin just because of me knowing that this is in a history book somewhere, that this actually quote unquote happened. Oh, a, I, I, I can entirely get that. You know what I mean? That makes so, sense because it's kind of creepy. It's just like a, well, how about we just dive into things? Like yeah, why this just, all happened? Go, go for it, man. What's the, what, what happened to the Bell family? Mm, so in the historical, oh events. boy. Back in the day, there was this old woman named Kate Batts that everybody hated. Yep. They all thought that she was a witch because she was rude, cantankerous, and honestly, just a forceful woman. Which is, back in the day, in 1800s America, meant that she's either a whore or a witch. Good old history. Exactly. Yikes. <laughs> so, whenever she got into like this big dispute now see the thing is this could be a dispute that's either based off of an argument she had with her brother-in-law or with john bell and the common running lore is that she had an argument and a falling out with john bell a landowner who she tried to make a deal with it all fell apart and she went to her grave cussing and spitting and cursing john bell saying she was going to kill him after she died which is ba-ba-da-ba how she came to be known as the Bell Witch. <laughs> because she came back and haunted that some bitch afterwards. <laughs> now, it's a good old John Bell where he said he wasn't no other good old boy. But back in the day, whenever some Bell Witch says she's going to haunt your ass, she's going to come back and haunt your ass <laughs> real good quick like. Two things. <laughs> Firstly, uh, I like that it's not really clear that the Bell Witch is indeed even a witch. Because they made it very clear that the the term She's a ghost. The term witch was very loosely used back then. Anything that you, was unexplained, they would just call it a witch. Like, so there you know is I mean? actually an explanation behind the witch thing. So back in the day, there was this history lore that if a witch was able to gain an item from you, like a pin, a very common item back in the day, or some kind of personal effect, they would use that personal item to draw a curse up and then control or curse you or make you sick something horrible horrible back in the 1800s because even just getting sick is like a, it's a curse. To die. 
Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna ultra die. Yeah. So there was like this folklore of hey, if you give your pin to somebody who you think is a witch, she might just kill you. And Kate Batts was known to be very, very much a beggar. She would ask people for personal effects all the time, which is even people who didn't really believe in witches and supernatural superstition back in the day became really guarded and would hide their personal effects around Kate Batts when she was alive. And at one point, Mm. she actually went to a church sermon where they all were kind of rallying against her. And she like just started speaking in tongues and was just like insulting the entire clergy. And she sat on the face of the preacher. I'm not joking about that. Look that shit up. It happened. Yikes. <laughs> so she and, did She did a Maleficent pretty much. Yeah, she like pulled shit off just to spite people that made her look like a witch, which is, you know, not surprising considering hick-ass Tennessee in the middle of the 1800s. Dude, where everything and, wasn't ramped up to 11. Exactly. And she's called the Bell Witch because when she died, her witchy, witchy, witch self decided to become a ghost and haunt the Bell family. Thanks to John Bell. Now, the second part of my laughing tangent earlier on, it just I just imagine it's like five years from now and Carol Baskins is on her deathbed and she's, <laughs> and she's cussing the name of Joe Exotic and she comes back as the exotic witch. <laughs> no, Joe's probably going to die before her. Thanks to all that freaking <laughs> thanks to how prison's going to treat him. Yeah, prison and cocaine and all the crazy stuff he was doing back in the day. I just I just want an exotic witch movie where where, oh boy. where Joe Exotic talks about how Carol Baskins is haunting him from the grave or something. The gay ghost. The you oh, know man. the gray ghost, which is a Batman the animated series episode. But I digress. That's true. So anywho, what happened to good old John Bell and his family? Well, a Kate lot. Bell, <laughs> a lot of whatever the fuck happened with Kate Bats. She became a ghost. She hunted his family and started doing things like clawing and scratching on their cabin in the middle of the night, yeah. knocking on things, making things disappear and shift and move about. And originally she was just a spectral apparition. Then as time went forward, as time kept going on, she gained more power in her deathless state. And eventually she started talking to the bells. Yeah. And when she asked her what she was, she said, I was once a happy spirit, but now I am unrestful. I like the idea that, because, uh, because pardon my French, but um, Miss Bats, the bell witch, was talking big shit. <laughs> oh, she entirely was. <laughs> and they would be like, so why do you, so why are you here? Uh, and she would say very clearly, yeah, John Bell needs to die. And like, okay, why? He just needs killing. <laughs> yeah, and it's hilarious. Stuff like that. Like, he would control. just like start harassing the entire family, like Kate Bell, the sons, the daughters, except Lucy. But we'll get to that later. She, she liked would Lucy. Call and harass this entire family. And eventually people will start thinking, well, that's Kate Batts. That's that old witch who like seriously hated John. Yep. Back and on the it's, dizzy. It, it's just hilarious because they kept doing this like random hodgepodge things of just random <laughs> harassment and just assaulting these people in the middle of the day and in the night and whatnot and it's just so funny because at one point they had a preacher come in and try to exercise her but the the preacher started laying out scripture and the witch would just start laughing or insulting them or counter scripture yeah make, that's what i wanted to mention feel insulted or even just say you got that scripture wrong and this is the reason why i'm a ghost and i got it better than you son i know i know the infinite secrets of the universe and i gotta tell you you interpreted that scripture wrong <laughs> <laughs> just give you a heads up <laughs> and so eventually she curses john to the point of like he's like Got stiff tongue, he can't feel his mouth, he locks yeah. up, then he gets seizures, and then he just fucking dies. Yeah, man. She got and hit. it's like, well, John was probably, well, let's put it this way. 1800s, 30-year-old plus man, he's going to die. Like, from some kind of illness. Something's like, going to get you, that, dude. That's just going to happen. Yeah, penicillin didn't come along for quite some time after that, right? <laughs> a lot of things didn't come along for <laughs> that, a while. It was rough life, dude. One thing and about, so, yeah, yeah they, they just say... Kate Bats, the old bell witch, haunted and killed him. And, of course, they say, like, they heard her voice yelling, I got him! I got him! I got that son bitch! And it's just the best. Hilarious bullshit. Because there, it just devolves. It's super devolves, and I like the stuff they even did tell in present day. Like how the band of kids grave robbed their tombstones. Mm-hmm. And then one of the driver who was driving the actual tombstones ended up dying, like, the exact next day. Like, crashed his car. Yep. 
And the kids, <laughs> the kids gently return the gravestones back. Like, yeah, okay. they're just like, uh, uh-uh, uh, nothing uh, with this. Don't want it. none of that. Don't want none of that. In kind of how the, the the locals interpret the 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 curse, where he was like, yeah, there's about three people, three different kinds of people here in Tennessee. Those who completely think it's false and think it's just stupid, you know, local folklore. Those who kind of believe it, <laughs> who are kind of and like, those who are just like, save me, Jesus, like, and those who, just coming. And those who are just definitely like full indoctrined into the myth and are definitely afraid of it every day. They have to live in that town. And you get to see a little bit of everybody in this, in this documentary. This documentary covers it so well with like actual people giving their own retellings and actual folklore experts and what and historians. Yeah. The actor is kind of going, <laughs> I'm going to see you. The, 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 the acting is the wackest, but what I do like is the, the acting is the best. It's just when they have the witch come out with CGI effects. Oh man. When the witch is wearing all black and she like slurps up to the camera. Does. Oh my God. It's slurps too, up is such a good way to put it too. It's too whack, Doug. My favorite part of this entire entire thing was the retelling of the slave walking from plantation to plantation oh, um God. visiting his wife in this in that story kind of got under my skin where he was walking across a certain way and he saw a black dog in the in, in the in the thoroughfare as it yep. were yep and the black dog was giving him a hard time so he had his trusty axe and split the dog's head clean open dog fell down dog go boom then he comes back the next night and now the dog has two heads. Yep. <laughs> and it, it just completely, as as it should, freaks him the hell out. And he just bolts it back to the uh, to his his slave house, you know, to his it, to the plantation. It's, it's just so. I mean, they, even like crazy. the very beginning, before the ghost even showed up, like the Bell family saw like this white ghostly hair in their ra- in their cabbage patch, and they shot it, and it just got up and st- kept running. Yeah, it's like I'm good. Or are the ghost lights, which is a thing, which is an actual thing, like like spiritual, like like um, like almost like fireflies, but they're giant swamp they're, gas, swamp gas, and that's the thing across the world. That's that's the thing that happens. Oh yeah, because yeah. it's more mysterious that way. Very oh yeah. Fun. Or when one of the sons saw the giant god bird, <laughs> the, <sky. laughs> the giant god bird, yeah, and they were like, oh, and then then uh, uh, Mr. Hollywood goes into like cryptids and like, oh yeah, it's very, it's highly possible he saw like a, he saw like he saw like a quick sequadal or something. <laughs> like, oh my what? god, they were so close to fucking Kentucky, they might as well just call it the Mothman. No wait, West Virginia, that's what. Yeah, it is. West Virginia. Oh boy, if you want to look into more American folklore, there's a friggin' example right there with the Mothman. Or you could just play Fallout 76 and get all of the lore. <laughs> uh uh-uh, uh, no, fuck that. No 76. <laughs> that game is rightfully dead for a lot of reasons. Speaking of dead, um. I just like the idea that the that we they never really classified, but you've thoroughly explained how this is indeed Bats, right? This is her. Oh, yeah. It's Kate Bats. And the best thing is that once John died, she kept haunting this family because she hated them all, except Lucy. Like, there was – I think there was like a – oh, God. I think it was Kate Bell or Nelsie mm-hmm. Bell. One of them. Kelsey Bell. Whatever. Uh, the wife of John Bell. Yeah. Uh, was just no daughter of John Bell. The God. daughter is the one that got that got really messed with, right? Just abused. Like she would just haunt her, yell at her, scream at her the entire time. Like physically Neighbors assault her. Yeah. Neighbors would come by to sleep with with this daughter because they were afraid that Kate Bats would like kill her otherwise. Yeah, and they were just they just kept going. This is insane. We see this girl harassed on the daily at night. I can't believe what I saw. I believe in the Bell Coast. Fuck this town. Yeah, it was, and they were saying that it may have been due to it's like a seduction of the innocent kind of situation because <laughs> this little girl was kind of have, yeah. Then, just just then you have Lucy Bell, the the wife of John Bell, who apparently Kate Batts was freaking fond of, and would just harass people for not giving Be- uh, Lucy free food. Like no, if Lucy was okay. by herself, they would she would haunt the neighbor. The, the Bell Witch would haunt the neighbors, yell at them, "Bring her food! Bring her food! I'll haunt you too!" I like that the uh, the the Bell Witch had friends and people like she thought was cool. Like it was another <laughs> guy, right? Was... She had like homies. Like yeah, I would have conversations with the Bell with uh with uh bats all the time. She was cool. She never bothered me. <laughs> like, exactly. What? It's just the you best. Don't, you don't hear about that. Like these deathly vestful spirits. It's like like f you f you. You're cool. 
yeah, yeah it's summer. the exact same scene from workers mm-hmm. yeah from uh from freaking uh how from half baked man and then you get just this entire diatribe and it goes on for generations literally up till like a few years go by uh, there's an entire spiel with Andrew Jackson, which is hilarious, but I'm not going to go into it because Andrew Jackson was a horrible, horrible, horrible man. Yeah. And then, like, she goes quiet but for about seven years, comes back, starts haunting again. Then Lucy Bell dies, old age and whatnot. And then she goes quiet again. And it's just, like, years and years go by with, like, sporadic things going on around the Bell property to the point of, in common day Tennessee, someone goes, hey, shit's going weird in this part of town. What's going on? Local natives just shrug and go, mm-hmm. Kate did it. Kate, Kate did up something. Kate and they just walk something. off. Yeah. And like a tourist will go, What? Whoa. Wait, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what are you talking about? What, there's a ghost? And they go, Yeah. 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 And no just, this is such a pit. This is the epitome of American folklore of I love just it. shit's weird. It's actually horrifying. And then it becomes kind of comedic in a way. It becomes accepted as a normal. Yeah, it becomes commonplace that shit that shit's fucked in this particular part of town. You know, and, and everyone who lives movie, there knows better. This documentary portrays it so well. Like these people are just kind of go, yeah, we got a ghost around this pod. That, and it's, a, it's a it's a hard ass of a ghost. Don't piss it off. Don't piss it off. That damn bad. She'll get you. No piss around. Exactly. Her and it's such a penny American folklore, which makes me want to go into a diatribe of other folklore because. Buckle down, Mike. You're going to get into this kind of stuff. So you're on the good old part of California where you don't have to run across anything besides, oh, I guess, skinwalkers. Skinwalkers, uh, chupacabras. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> chupacabras, skinwalkers, wendigos. Wendigos every once in a while. Maybe blur out that S word because that's actually like a, a terrifying thing for like the actual lore itself. It's to not give them not to speak the word or else it gives the creature power yeah they'll come for you so yeah, i expect so... to i've seen chupacabras dog <laughs> okay well, how about this that's a whole other podcast blur out that s word so it's not so offensive okay what s word yeah the s word uh, I, I totally missed it did i say it or did you say it no i did oh you said the creature's name yeah but you, it's already said so it's coming for you no matter what Right? Yeah, I'm saying let the audience blur it out. Oh, it's like the rain. We don't want to. We don't want the audience to accidentally get hit. Yeah, with it exactly. Too. Oh, we're saving your lines podcast, and guess what? I'm not blurring it out. Get oh, wrecked. Fuck you, man. GG no read. Right? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> GG no read. Just don't oh, say it. Also, be there is there is a Hulu thing right now called Hunt for the uh, Blah Blah Walker. It's actually really good. Would recommend. Anyway, Anywho. so there's all this stuff, and you realize this isn't. This is just Native American folklore. This stuff is great. Yeah, like honestly, Native American folklore monsters and whatnot are actually great. Yeah, things. they're beautiful they're and they're meaningful, and, they're and they have a point, and they have a place, and they can be respected and actually even deified on some levels. They're not just boo haunted house, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they actually have like meaning. They're terrifying. Yeah, and you know, it's actually just like really, really. I mean, just cool in general. I got to say, if we're talking about, like, lore and folklore, I was obsessed with the Jersey Devil for a a period of my life. Obsessed. Like, I wanted to find it. (laughs) I was was down to make the pilgrimage (laughs) to go get it. Yeah, but, you know. I mean, then you have, like, literally, like, giants and, like, eight people. Yeah. You know. Swamp ape, dude. Nice squatches. The yellow yellow man, dude. And it's like hilarious because then there's like various different types of Sasquatch. There's like the the Sasquatch that kind of like runs around the forest and doesn't really want to be seen. Then you have yeah. like the Janosqua, which is like an Native American variant, which is just like they kill and eat meat exclusively and just hunt yeah. people down. Sasquatches are like bears. You come across a Sasquatch that's closer to a black bear. You just tell it to shoo and it runs away. Then you have the grizzlies. So, where if so, you see it, you're going to die. So one of my favorites is Mothman because Mothman is hilariously stupid. Mothman is the best, dude. I w- it is the funniest damn thing. You know what's even better though? Here in good old Arkansas, Fort County, you ever hear about the Swamp Ape? I know about Swamp Ape, dog. I know all about Swamp. swamp you know about ape. the Legend of Boggy Creek? I don't know about the Legend of Boggy Bog- Creek, dog. Boggy Creek monsters, the Swamp Ape of Fort County, Fort Arkansas. It, yeah, it's also it's also literally called Fock, F-A-U-K-E, yep. Fock. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a 
God damn it, Arkansas. So the Swamp Ape is a cousin to the Sasquatch. It is about a foot or two shorter, yep. much more hairy, has big old red glowing eyes the size of silver dollars, and it's got an unnatural odor. It much stinks. like a skunk and a wet dog mixed together. Yeah, Hence, it stinks. Skunk ape. Yeah, man. So I look at that the American South had to take a freaking Sasquatch and make it shorter and uglier and smellier and call it its own. Yep, that's us. That's our shit. Don't touch it. <laughs> no, that's my shit, apparently, in Arkansas. That's yeah, my man. Shit. You're in California. You're nah, all we got, I'm telling you, all we got is chupacabras, Doug, and they get you. Oh, I I, I, lo- I kind of love Latin American monsters and whatnot. They're actually oh, pretty Latin great. American stuff is awesome, dude. Like Creatures, I, folklore from around the world is beautiful and interesting and so uh, it's untapped marketing potential <laughs> you, can make a movie, you can make a movie about <laughs> any of it <laughs> but just, then you get things like freaking uh, chupacabra which is fun hilarious kind of silly but also kind of terrifying still yeah just kick you get, it then you get la llorona oh that's a whole different that's a ghost though i mean it's still a cryptid essentially it's yeah. like a monster of a latin american folklore and it's actually pretty great let's Get back to Miss Bats. Oh boy, the bar. Uh, Let's wrap up Miss Bats. So okay, so eventually, yeah, the legend just kind of dies off, and the Bell Witch is just kind of floating about hither and thither, just kind of out there. So the Bell Witch's impact on American American history uh, can be felt, as we said, in popular media. A lot of a lot of many horror movies have been kind of based off of this tale of just the most cantankerous human on earth who was so <laughs> mad that her anger became ethereal a la the grudge you know and this thing had a grudge with john bell who apparently wasn't he was a pillar of the society john bell was the runner of the church i want to say am i getting that right um john he wasn't the leader of the church he wasn't the leader of the church but he he had a he, they were a staunch christian family yeah yeah And pretty much they thought that because they were so polarizing and so staunch in their belief that this spirit has attached to their family almost as in an affront to the godliness of the area at the time. Like kind of the the, the demon, or in this case, the witch, thumbing her nose at conventional Christianity. But in all essence, it was just to to work over John Bell because she hated him so much. Yeah, and I it's just so spiteful and amazing how it just works out together in the end. Yeah, it's she, fantastic. She it's, gets her she gets her revenge through sheer time. She has she's a ghost. She has nothing but time on her hands. You know what I'm saying? So he's going to yeah. die eventually. And now they're yelling at each other in hell, heaven, I don't know. In the you know, they they they're both on they're both haunting the uh, premises now. <laughs> You don't know until you go there. It's just amazing that this spiteful woman became an actual ghost through sheer force of, I hate this man. I'm going to haunt him. He needs to go down, and I wasn't able to do it. So I'm going to break the rules of spiritual transition. (laughs) Just stick around. Uh, I like the way that she haunted them. I like that. It was very. It's all very subtle scratches at the door, pulling um, um, the the older sister gaining her... uh, Blankets constantly pulled off of her all the time, you know what I mean? Like, just messing with them. Of course, the infestation smells and things like that. And even, and I love the full conversations she would have with them. Like, most ghosts are very kind of candid. They'll say a word, you know, cheeseburger. What does that mean? Huh? But this ghost was like, you know what? Actually, your scripture is wrong. You're interpreting it incorrectly. And I feel you should bone up on your Bible there, Pastor. <laughs> whatever bats get out of here no i will not you know what i mean it's i just i just love this i just freaking love this amazingness because it's always just yo i hate you i'm gonna haunt you and your family forevermore peak americanism yeah i'm gonna haunt you the you know the hatfields and the mccoys man uh my anger is infinite (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it will never go away. <laughs> so what do you say, Mike? What did you think about this movie? As a movie, I can't help. I got to be honest. I'm, I can't sugarcoat how I feel about the movie in general. 
the production value, the acting, the costuming. I swear I had one of the shirts that one of the old, you know, back in the, you know, the black and white, you know, you know, interpretations mm-hmm. of what was happening. The guy was wearing a shirt that I own. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, like, I know that shirt. I, that one button, I got that. It's in the closet. Uh, so I'm just like, I get it. Uh, the graphics were hilarious. You know, there were some parts that really creeped me out, like when the when the when the kids were walking through the forest and they found the hanging woman. Yeah, they did that really well. That kind of got under my skin, and how the hanging woman was kind of still moving and just uh, pieced out, disappeared in front of their faces. Certain things they they did well, and I, and but on the other side of it, it's a like you said, it's a very well done documentary. Uh, they, they, the interviews they had with people were very interesting. Like I said, I couldn't tell if these were actors who were, who were actual, who were really into it or people who were really into it that knew how to take acting cues. I couldn't tell. So that threw me for a loop. Uh, I like how specific they were, like mentioning like the period of time this was, they stated that the church, the, uh, that was kind of the focal point of this town was built uh, around the time that George Washington was first inaugurated as president. So there's an old history to this, right? Like a super old history in the way that you were inter- really drawing out your final thoughts on this. Movie. No, I know. Cause, cause I don't have a, cause the answer I want to give <laughs> is layered. Like I, like it's, it's hard to explain. Austin. You don't like the movie, but you like the lore. How about that? I don't like the movie, but I like how I don't like the production of the movie as a movie, but I love the research they did to get the information that they provided. That's there's merit in that. You know what I mean? So I'm really one foot out the bed and one foot back in the bed. So if I was to rate this zero out of five, um, uh, swamp apes, (laughs) (laughs) I would give it a three. I would give it a three out of five. And that's simply because, I think that the approach of the acting could have been a bit better. I get it. Right there, this is industrial lights and magic, right? Uh, but we've seen movies with similar budgets that pulled off better shots. You know what I'm saying? The Blair Witch Project costs like ten dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? It costs the money in their pockets. Um, but at the same time, it educated me on the Blair on the Blair Witch. Jeez. I'm never going to mix these, not mix these two up. It educated me on the Bell Witch. It educated me on that part of the country. And it makes me interested to learn more, honestly, to, to dive a little bit deeper into the the lore. And I would love to visit and just check it out. So there is plenty to explore in the lore in general. Really quickly, I would give this a good three out of five. I love the documentary series more so about this in general because it's actually kind of like, uh, accurate and how the entire lore is presented in general. It's actually quite nice. I yeah. like it. Mm-hmm. There is acting. It's hammy, but it kind of portrays what actually happened according to the lore as well. So it's not overly dramatic. I would also say three out of five, enjoyable. Watch it. It's fun. It's American folklore. So that's interesting as hell. Yeah. Also, if you want to know more, plenty to read. Plenty to read of the course of like 200 years. Yeah. Also, my God, this was literally an episode of a podcast on uh, po- last podcast on the left, like just last month. And that was amazing. So if you want to go watch, listen to those guys do it, they did it pretty well, too. They covered the entire story of the Bell Witch. Yeah, here we're just kind of um, going over this film. We're not talking about the history itself. We're talking about the mark of the Blair Witch out December 15th. <laughs> You know, the Blair Witch. I, see, see, I need to rip. <laughs> my tongue is gonna freaking fall out like like John Bell. Um, Mark of the Bell Witch, uh, and it's funny that I keep mixing those two together because you know one's inspired by the other, and that's one thing that kind of tricked me was I thought this was pure imagination from someone's brain. It's like no, there's a deep lore with like you said over 200 years of analyzing and and speculating and that in itself is fascinating and worth the watch so i would definitely recommend this one if you just want a little taste of america americana of our a little little taste of our dark history a little bit of the supernatural let's check out mark of the bell witch 
Where can we find you, Austin? You can find me in Austin Ozzy on Twitter. And uh, I'll be here along with Mike, along for the ride on the last podcast that we're ever going to hear about for <laughs> The Bell Witch. <laughs> you never know. It could be like 2025. And, you know, like like Daniel Radcliffe makes a Bell, a Bell Witch <laughs> remake or something. We're right back where we started. Uh, yeah. And if you want more content like this, if you want more cryptic content, I would... Now that we've ta- had this episode, I'm kind of inspired that we can have like a little cryptic cast oh where, we, where we pick a monster and just talk about it. Oh so boy. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. I know Austin would be down. I know you're D Austin. To kind exactly. Of... I'm, I am all about that. <laughs> Good goo goo. All that juju goo goo. So uh, that juju beans. If you want more of that, let us know on Twitter. We're at M Nerdiverse. Where we do polls, we do funny posts, we do gifts, all the Twitter stuff. And every once in a while, we'll give a little bit of nerd history when we feel like it. Uh, if you want to support us monetarily, you can always do so via Patreon, which is Patreon forward slash MLTN. I know there's not a lot of meat to it right now, but if you give us money, we will grow the beef. We will manufacture the beef. And it's real beef. It's not Beyond Beef. That stuff scares me. Um, have you ever had a Beyond Beef burger, Brer? Not to get oh, too actually, far off yeah, topic. They're fantastic. They're great. Is it Soylent Green? I mean... Is it people? We'd probably save a lot more trouble and energy if we did make it out of Soylent Green. There's a lot of people on Earth, man. Yeah. A lot of it. A lot of... I'm not going to go into cannibalism on this episode. I was almost there. <laughs> if you're not a cannibal, please like our content. <laughs> Is it cannibalism if it's just recycled? Yes. <laughs> if you're not a cannibal con- comment on our episodes <laughs> subscribe to our channels because feedback is important and if you are a cannibal email us ah. at ma- email us at nemasesthenerdiversecast.com and tell us all about it how do you go about it how do you not or get if caught you are a cannibal, stop <laughs> well stop but if so how do you get away with it man tell us the secrets of your cannibalistic ways we totally won't rat you out we, swear. we won't rat you out I swear we won't have to. G- Gmail will do it. <laughs> because we're all being monitored. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And I've been your also host, Austin. And we will always ask you to look towards the skies. Look towards the skis. Oh, Jesus, a bell witch. I saw it in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs>